Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman, and this is the Chili Miami Spice. This is a new board from Chili, and it's in their 5050 construction, which is a stringerless EPS blank with epoxy resin and uh, carbon reinforcement, both for strength and then also for the flex around the rails right here. This board uh, is a small wave board. I wouldn't say it's a bottom of the line, bottom, bottom, bottom groveler, but like right up above that. And, uh, and you could ride it into some pretty decent surf as well. Um, what separates this from a full on groveler, I would say is, is the tail shape. You can see with the double wings, it's actually a little bit easier to see it on the bottom. You got a wing right here, like a subtle bump, and then another subtle bump and it pulls in the tail. And so what that does is it really gives the board the drive and the glide of having it be wider in the nose and the middle. But by pulling it in, it makes the board a lot easier to control in the pocket of the wave, not so drifty like you are on a, on a bigger tail, and a lot more precise. You can keep it a lot tighter in the pocket and be a lot more precise with uh, with your turns on on this style of board. A lot of the a lot of the bigger, wider boards in the back they go super fast down the line, but then you find that your you know the the pocket of the wave is way way in back of you. So that helps the performance um, as far as the turns go. This board, you know, you can use it in uh, you know anywhere serve from about there you know up to really i would say soft shoulder to head is kind of where the range of this board is and kind of where it works the works the best uh, i think a lot of people shy away from epoxy boards because they get a little bit confused about epoxy like kind of whenever you throw the word epoxy out there's just a giant cloud of confusion and if people have ever had a negative experience on epoxy it's a board that had epoxy resin but it was probably not, or actually it was definitely not the epoxy resin that caused the, caused the negative uh, performance characteristics of the board. It was a lot of the boards earlier on in surfing that had epoxy resin also had a, uh, a sandwich construction like where they had a hard foam shell wrapped all the way around the board. And uh, that made the board really, really stiff. And yes, that board had epoxy resin, but it wasn't epoxy resin that made that board stiff. It was that hard foam shell. This board just has the EPS core obviously the fiberglass layers and then epoxy resin. And so the epoxy resin, what that does compared to polyester resin is it's, it's a much stronger resin and it can also bend further before it starts cracking. And so that does two things. One, obviously it's gonna bend further before it breaks, but it also if you're not breaking the board, if you're just wearing the board out, it'll bend and bend back and retain that flex pattern much longer than poly will over time the polyester resin bends and bends back and you start getting hairline cracks. And then that's when your board goes flat, like just like a dead wet noodle, uh, where this board will retain its flex uh, longer than a standard uh, PU polyester board. The other thing that I think a lot of people shy away from epoxy boards on is the, uh, is the deck being really stiff and then not getting those dents, like where you, where you like having them under your front foot and, and underneath your heel. This board, uh, the deck of the board holds up well, but you do get a little bit of an impression underneath your feet, which is nice because then you know you're in the right spot and also gives you a little bit more traction. As far as uh, performance on this board, I got to surf this board a ton up in the Northeast uh, around uh, when we were getting a swell from Hurricane Gaston. It was the hurricane was really far away, so super long lines coming in, like long period swell you would have a, uh, it would just go totally flat and then these lines would just come stacking in, but they were all like kind of in that small to mid range size and uh, got to surf it on a few nice lined up beach breaks and then uh, a super fun sand point uh, where the longest waves like throughout the day were over 500 yards on a wave and, and like right in the size range of this board kind of like shin, you know, anywhere up to about, you know, shoulder high on the sets, but just going forever down this sand point and just super, super fun really turny and uh, just a great all around board. Super easy to catch waves on. It's got a relatively flat nose rocker. And when you did get a good wave, the, the rails of this board aren't like ultra bulky. So it's got the decks pretty flat in the middle, but then it comes off and the rails even on this board, which is a, is a bigger board, that's like a 42 liter 6'2", um, the rails aren't gigantic. And a lot of times on a board, of this volume, you're gonna to start to get really beefy rails, which are gonna slow you up in the turns. So Miami Spice on this board, we've got uh, the Chili three-piece tail pad as well, which fits well into the back of this board. 
and you're going to have to, on this board, you know, a lot of grovelers this size, this volume, you're like, oh, yeah, sure, just go get the widest pad they make. But because it pulls into this rounded pin and drops off at each one of these bumps, you're going to want to pick your tail pad to make sure that it matches the back of the board. Because, again, a lot of these boards would be, like, way out here on the tail. On the tail. So you'd want to get a, a wider pad where I think a normal pad up to maybe some of the more moderate water pads will work well on this board. Great all-around board. Um, if you live in a place with just average surf, this could be your only board. You could ride it kind of on the small days all the way up to the good days, like thinking someplace like South Carolina or up in New England where most of the time it's not epic surf. You could just basically have this thing and call it, call it good. It's the Miami Spice from Chile. It's available in the 50-50 construction that we just described, and it's also available in standard PU poly as well. Uh, fin wise, I rode this board uh, standard thruster, quad, and uh, also twin plus trailer. And uh, the favorite that I kept coming back to was the thruster. And this, these are the Futures Blackstick F8s. And it's a bigger fin, like a, a really good fin for generating speed, which is what you're doing on a board like this. And this worked really well. I used this fin set uh, both as the quad and as the thruster. And then for the twin plus trailer, I used uh, the Futures T1. And so all of those fins would work really well on this board if you're in, in my weight kind of range. And then if you're uh, lighter, Future also makes the black sticks in, in smaller sizes that you'd want to check out as well. It's the Chili Miami Spice. Great all around groveler to mid range board and uh, super fun, super flexy. A lot of spring out of the turns and just, uh, just a blast to surf on those. Those long point waves were just insane for dialing this thing in. So check it out. If you have any questions on the Chili Miami Spice, you can give us a call at the shop, 252-987-6000, or look us up online, realwatersports.com forward slash surfing. Thanks for tuning in.